Uh, yes, indeed. We're live and direct on KXP right here in the live room, kxp.org. The afternoon show. My name is Larry Mizell Jr. And I'm so happy to say today we have with us Ravina. Hello. Hi. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having us. This is a dream. Well, I'm glad we could make it come true. This Thank is you. a this is a fantastic space to uh, encounter your music, which is so colorful and soothing. Thank so you. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, what you got today. Amazing. And we got an amazing band too. Right on. Aaron, Kale, and Tyler. <laughs> What's up, y'all? KEXP, KEXP.org, Ravina Live. Ravina live on KEXP. That was mystery.
Vina live on KEXP. You just heard Headaches from the Moonstone EP from this year. Sounding great, y'all, for Thank real. Thank you. Yeah. I know you got a couple more. Yes. We have two more to share. This next one is from my album, Asha's Awakening, which was released a couple months ago. Trip and eat them flowers too 
second to introduce my beautiful band to y'all. We got Aaron Lau on the bass. Yes, Ravina live on KEXP. Yes. Kathy left for Kathmandu. That's one of my favorites from Asha's Awakening. I'm so glad y'all oh. came in with that one. Thank you. Absolutely. Had to bring the for funky sure. Bollywood to hey. KEXP. Love it. Thank you. <laughs> and I know you got just one more and it's a cover. I was wondering if you'd talk to me about that. So th this next song that I'm about to sing, Dham Maru Dham, was actually the original inspiration for Kathy Left for Kathmandu. Oh, wow. Because Dham Maru Dham is the song that's about the westernization of Indian spirituality. And the song is basically just about getting high. Um, okay. So I was really inspired by it. <laughs> I love it. And it's originally sung by Asha Bosley. The OG. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> KEXP.org. Ravina live. Live on KEXP, KEXP.org. That was fantastic. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, your latest album, Asha's Awakening, um, 
I, I feel like the process of making it that I've, I've read about um, kind of mirrors the, the narrative of the record, where it's kind of like exploration and a homecoming at the same time. Yes, yes. Uh, I was reading about all of the, like the dancing you were learning and just the deep dive into the music uh, and the culture and the spirituality that, of course, is, is, is home. Um, but at the same time, going deeper into it for your music than you've done to date. Yes. What was that process like for you? Mm, it, it, it's true to the album's name. It was an awakening. Um, I think that on Lucid, it was so much about me soothing myself and healing myself in this very comforting and sweet way. And on Asha's awakening, I was stepping into a lot of joy and power and confidence as a woman who had recently like undergone a lot of healing. Um, and it, involved growing my artistry a lot, becoming more confident in all facets of the artistry, whether it's um, performance, dance, production, writing, um, like me and this whole crew really were deep diving into old Bollywood records from the 50s up until the early 2000s. And then we were also looking at the ways that um, that those sounds were intersecting with the West. So it was like this epic kind of manifesto I love it. Of, of like history and culture. That's brilliant. And I love that the song, the, the, the Maru Dom, uh, the, the subject of it about the kind of Westernization, um, at the same time is drawing on Western musical traditions, like yeah. black musical traditions and everything. So there's like a whole continuum represented there. Yes, and exactly. And I feel like you really got to that on this record in a big way. Absolutely. I've been so inspired by R&B and soul and jazz for so long. And it was so interesting going back to Bollywood music and seeing the ways that they were inspired by black music tradition for ages. And then the ways that uh, so many artists from the West were also collaborating with um, Indian artists, like people like Alice Coltrane and mm -hmm. Timbaland. And it's so much history there. It's really Absolutely. fun. Um, I saw you talking about how you know, as a South Asian musician, there's not like a big community of very successful, well-known uh, contemporaries. Um, but I saw that you got to work with uh, Rastam Batman Glij and uh, Ashla Puthli, of course, yes. uh, the OG Space Princess. The OG Space Princess. Yeah. <laughs> How did that feel getting to to collaborate with them? It was it was so affirming and incredible, especially with Asha, because she just really felt like a fairy godmother and like someone that my soul had been connected to for ages and we were just met to meet through music. Um, so it was a blessing and I have chills thinking about it, just like how, uh, how much beauty has been able to manifest in my life through music. What a thing. What a gift. Yeah, right? it's a gift. I know in the process of making this record, you guys like ordered some instruments that you'd, you'd never worked with before and were kind of learning. Yes. Uh, how was that with that kind of uh, trial and error? Oh, it was amazing. Like uh, there's also a really um, prominent producer on our record, Everett, who uh, helped us also do a lot of this historical and um, cultural exploration. And we ordered instruments like the Swarmundal, the tabla i'm looking at aaron because aaron learned how to play so many of them it's like a um, nicknamed indian banjo which is um it's like got a keyboard style um way of um attacking the notes but then it's like also a guitar because it's picked and a lot of indian instruments have harps on them too so that was a big part of the textures that we chose dolak yeah. which is a um a percussion instrument, just Electric also. Electric guitar, yes. that was huge. So we, we invited um, Indian musicians who were classically trained, like this artist, Neelam Jeet Dhillon, and then we, but mostly since Aaron and I were in quarantine and like we were the only two people who could work together, right. Aaron was just learning how to play these rare Indian instruments. And nice it's a work. testament to his talent. Absolutely, and, and it sounds fantastic on the record. Um, I know that a lot of things on the record were like a family affair too. Um, 
then you have a member of your family helping transcribe and, and write some lyrics in Hindi. Yes, yes. I had, uh, I had fa- family members like my aunt, my cousin, my mom help transcribe in Hindi some of the lyrics. But then I also worked with this amazing artist, Leo Kalyan, who also helped me um, translate a lot and they're from the UK. Brilliant. Yeah. You know, so much of your music to, to date has been so soothing and come from a place of healing, been so meditative. And I love that you have a guided meditation at the end of the record. <laughs> That's yeah. incredible. Thank you. Um, were you, did anybody say, oh, why are you doing that? <laughs> yeah. Why are you putting that on your record? <laughs> For sure. For sure, people said that. <laughs> I mean, I think like half of this album process, people are like, why are you doing that? Right. <laughs> but um, I feel like it was because I also am so invested uh, in my spirituality, and that's another huge part of my life. I just felt like I wanted to offer that to people um, who are just getting into meditation. It feels like that, an offering, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's a beautiful spirit to to come at it with. Yes. Um, thank you all so much for joining us today. This has been fantastic. Thank you. Ravina. It's so fun. Live on KXP. And Ravina is going to be uh, in Portland uh, Thursday, the 28th of April at the Hawthorne Theater and here in Seattle at Numos on the 29th, that Friday. So go check them out. Right here on the afternoon show, KXP, KXP.org. I'm Larry Mizell Jr. Thank you for being here. If you love and support uh, everything we're doing, uh, you can go like and subscribe, all that good stuff on the YouTube channel. And of course, your donations are always appreciated and keep all this magic alive. Thank you once again. KEXP. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.